the 12 string guitar, Caleb has been applying the True Oil varnish with a spray gun. Done a pretty darn nice job. You can't spray it on too thin. I mean, you just can't spray it on too thin. If you spray it the least amount of coat on this, it will run. Overall, there's not many runs in this. I do see a pretty good run right in here. Um, that's not bad, really. That's about as good as it gets. He said there was another run up in here somewhere, and I don't, or maybe it was back here. I think it was. And I haven't seen that one yet. I'm sure I'll see it eventually. I really do like the way this is turning out. I think that's really pretty. We're going to uh, work on this now. Now, the True Oil Company basically says use steel wool on this. You know, I'm okay with that, but steel will make such a mess because all the little steel gets everywhere, you know, the little fibers. So, I'm going to start off with sandpaper and we'll see if I need to use steel wool. I don't know. Might have to. I'm going to try 400. I may go to the 220. The 220 cuts it so much faster. 400 is a little bit light, but... If it'll cut it, it might be the best. I can pretty much tell already that I probably won't want the 400. It's just a little bit too light. Kind of figured that would be the case. We go through the 220 so fast around here. I uh, pretty much every time I need a piece, I have to get out a new sheet, cut it. Anyway. And again, people are screaming at the uh, camera, use a sanding block. To which I say, if that's the way you prefer to do it, use a sanding block. I have no problem with that. That really works well. I don't like to use a sanding block for a lot of reasons. I mean, I do use them, don't get me wrong. I just use them under certain circumstances, and I'm not at that circumstance at the moment. I like to use my fingers. Uh, I can blend it better. Like right there where that uh, run was, I was able to blend that right out. Now around this sound hole where the finish is accepting at, at different rates in the different woods, I can blend that with my fingers. It actually saves sanding when you do it this way because you can put the pressure where you need it and where you don't need it, you don't have the pressure. And the sanding block rides over a much larger area and you don't get any specific pressure anywhere, which is a good thing in a lot of cases. That's just not the case I feel like I'm dealing with at the moment. Yeah, the 220 seems to be doing just, just a perfect job right at the moment. There's been about, oh, I don't know, half a dozen coats of the varnish applied at this point. But as I said, it goes on so thin that hard to explain how thin we're putting it on there and therefore when you say a half a dozen coats it's probably equal to about two regular coats if that. One of the secrets of course of sanding by your fingers is you don't stay in one place unless you need to stay in one place because like those runs for instance but you keep it moving and you keep even pressure everywhere. Now that I'm out in these bigger areas, I might go to the sanding block. I don't have a problem with it out in these bigger, flatter areas, but in places like this where, I, where I've got to do detailed sanding, the sanding block is not my friend. One of the nice things about using the carpet like I do is whenever you want to clean your sandpaper you just wipe it on the carpet see how it you know, that's where I'm holding it and see how it cleaned that. So 
it's very easy to clean your sandpaper. Now that is if you're using the right kind of sandpaper. This is that 3M. Lowe's also has their own brand of this that they made for, for Lowe's specifically. But this is the uh, no slip grip backing, lasts longer, fine um, advanced abrasives. This is, this is better than your normal. I guarantee you this is the kind you want to get. Nothing builds up on this compared to most of the other sandpapers. Whenever you get finished building up on your sandpaper, it is a nightmare to sand. This stuff doesn't, this kind of sandpaper does not build up, and that is so helpful when you're doing finish work. Keep in mind, this is the very first time this has been sanded since the finishes were applied. My goal is to get this ready for another coat today. This is a Friday and uh, Caleb has already left to go to his home. He lives up in the Kansas City area. People frequently ask, why don't you relegate these tasks to your apprentice? Well, you must think that he's sitting around doing nothing. Whenever he's here, he is busy 100% of the time. He is working on instruments. I don't pay him to sit around, so he's not ready to just grab a hold of my sandpaper and take over my sanding chores, you know? If that was the case, we wouldn't get anything done. Looking really good right now. I'm going to uh, do a whole lot more of this sanding off camera. And I'll show you what it looks like when I get her further along. And hopefully my goal is, if my hands don't give out on me and they're already feeling like they're going to, if they don't give out on me, I will get this all sanded yet today and uh, get another coat of varnish on it for sure. Turning the camera right back on only minutes after I turned it off. And the reason is I vacuumed everything and once I vacuumed all the dust off of here, I can still see those runs in there. Even as much as I sanded it, you can still see those runs. I don't know how well they're showing up for you. Just get it in the camera, turning it different directions. Maybe you can see the runs, I don't know. But they're right in here. Uh, you can see those marks. Once you get runs, it's very difficult to ever get rid of the look of that. Oh, you can do it, but it's, it's not, a real simple thing. So you try really hard not to get any runs. And of course it would be far better if there were no runs on the front, but you just have to sand until they disappear. And uh, oftentimes that's a lot more sanding than you would think you would have to do. So let's see what that looks like. It's a little bit better, but I can still see a hint of it. And it's only a hint at this point, but I still see it. Another thing that you run into when you have a run, oftentimes, even though the rest of the finish is dry, inside that run, because it's so much thicker, it may not be perfectly dry. This appears to be pretty dry. It's been set for two or three days. And this kind of varnish dries pretty fast. Actually, it's probably been set in longer than two or three days. It's probably been more like four days or so. Now that looks better. Now 
Now, only because I know it was there, I can sort of see a little faint outline of a place or two, but very, very, very faint now. It could be recoded now, and I don't think it would be an issue. If you don't get it out of there, though, pretty much guarantee you, you'll see it in your next coat. I don't see it now. I don't see any hint of it, but I'll keep an eye on that area. Thought I might mention, um, you know, all the little grain lines that you can see in this. Yeah. You know, obviously they're not filled. I've tried dozens of fillers. I've tried every filler that I can find on the market. I've had companies send them to me claiming that theirs works. Personally, in my opinion, Sorry to be so blunt, but none of them are any good in my opinion. I mean, I seriously don't like a single one of them. Some people get on me and say, well, why don't you use CA glue and fill it with that? Why don't you use epoxy? Well, first of all, some things affect the tone also, and I don't want to fill it with epoxy because of that. On this particular wood, uh, all the fillers either cause well, first of all, they just don't fill it. That's the first problem. Second of all, not with at least not without four or five different applications and sandings. And so, if I'm going to do that, I'll just fill it with finish. I mean, it's just no different. It's you know, it's just no benefit. Um, and then the other problem is they change the color of the wood. They change the color of the of the fill holes. Uh, you know, it's just one problem after another. So I don't use fillers, period. I'm just done with that whole thing. That's why, you know, I, I just sand it like this. Now, granted, I will probably never get the perfect fill job like they do in the factory. Um, but on the other hand, <clears throat> this kind of finish sounds really good. And so that's why I use it. And the goal here is to sand almost all the finish off of it, and that does help level and fill the holes. But it just takes a lot of sanding. But as I mentioned, even all those other fillers that claim to fill, you got to put them on three, four times, and you got to do a lot of sanding in between, and you got to do all kinds of other things. So I don't see much benefit to that. If they would, if you could put them on and they'd fill the hole, and you're and you sand it once and you're done, I'd be happy with that. But that's not the case with any of them I have tried. And I bet I've tried more of them than you have. That's what I'd bet, because I've tried just about every one of them that's on the market. Except for the epoxy ones. I'm not going to do the epoxy ones. I just don't want to do that. So there's a big run right here. So we'll do that. As I said, I'm sanding most of this off anyway, so this one will come out, I'm sure. And again, I'm gonna turn the camera back off. Now that I've made my few points there, and you won't have to scream at the camera, why aren't I using fillers, etc. now you know. I've given it a real good going over with the sandpaper, 220 everywhere. And I vacuumed it, I vacuumed my carpet. Uh, so now I'm going into the clean phase here, trying to get it wiped down and clean enough to put the next coat on it. I found quite a few runs actually. There were, well, I say quite a few. There were about four, four different runs. I found one up on the peg head and uh, that was a little tough to get out. I ended up having to sand pretty much the whole peg head out up in here. You know, that's to be expected with this finish. Uh, this finish is just amazing on how easy it runs. 
I don't believe I've ever seen a finish that would run easier than this stuff does, the True Oil. I like the finish uh, when you're done with it, but it's, it's, you know, it's just like any other finish. It's got its good points and its bad points. I found a pretty good dent back here um, where I guess I had clamped something. And anyway, I had to sand a lot of that out and then feather it out. That was quite a, quite a sanding job right there. But uh, anyway, I think it turned out fine. Like I always say, it is what it is. You do the best you can with it and you just keep going. But I think that's gonna be ready now to apply the next coat. So that was sanding number one after probably around six coats. And that's just a guess. I don't know how many coats Caleb put on there, but he put on quite a few. I always hang them from the end pin here, and so I'm screwing back in my little hanger rig. And I will say, if you do make something like this, uh, be sure that you have the screw in pretty far, and you know it can spin on this, which is a good thing, but it can also stick to your screw and unscrew and uh, cause you know the instrument to fall on the ground. Don't ask me how I know. The very first, very first guitar I ever built, I built it for myself, and it hit the ground, not because of that exact same issue, but uh, I had it hanging on a wire type deal, a wire hook, and the wire straightened out. So you gotta be careful when you hang them up, boy. That's all I can tell you for sure. Because if it can happen, pretty much it will happen. At least that's my luck. So take extra precautions. I think I've got it pretty well wiped down, pretty well clean. I'll go hang it up for the moment and uh, get my spray stuff ready and I'll maybe even show you a little bit of the spray. Well, I'm over here on the dark side. I wanted to show the outside out there and do this outside, but the sun is so bright, it's really hard to film out there today. Um, anyway, I'm just inside the door here. It's a little too windy out there also. That's the other reason I need to do it inside here. So I've got the camera actually in the door and pointed back into the shop. I've got this ready to go. Very little uh, spray in the in the can here because it takes very little. Maybe that's too little. I might need a little bit more. But one thing about this is you can't go over it twice. You can only go over it once. Otherwise, you will get runs. It's 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 very picky to spray. can't go over it twice. I'm not joking. It's the, if you don't spray it that thin, it will run absolutely for sure. <laughs> So my quiz for today is what do you call the definition of insanity? And we all know the answer. Doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting a different result. So instead of spraying it on this time, I'm going to apply it on with a brush and see if we get a different result. I'm hoping I can put it on a little thicker this way, leave it laying flat. Maybe it will finally fill the pours the rest of the way. I don't know, it's just a thought. We'll give it a shot. I don't figure it's gonna hurt anything. 
this stuff uh, if you're worried about brush strokes uh, it's so it goes on so thin and it's kind of self leveling I don't think there'll be brush strokes in it once it settles down here there might be for a little while though stuff runs just by looking at it so if you get any right to the edge it will run right around the edges so I'm just going to wipe the edges back off it really runs easy that's the one negative of the true oil I don't know if that's going to make a difference at all I doubt it will but I thought I'd try it I don't think it's really helping that much because I can see a lot of pores through there already. Oh well, just going to have to let that sit and do its thing, see how it turned out. I put two brushed on coats on the back of this just to see if it would fill the holes. I was just explaining to my colleague over here that uh, it makes no sense to me whatsoever. Now I'm talking common sense, you understand. It makes no sense at all why these holes don't fill in, especially when you lay it down flat and you brush it in. Typically you think gravity would work and the holes would actually be the thing that would fill in first, right? I mean, doesn't that make sense logically? But no, the holes expel the, the finishes. Nitrocellulose lacquer is even worse. This stuff does it too though. But you would sure think so. It, it, it makes no sense at all, just like it makes no sense that everybody knows heat rises, but it's always colder up on top of a mountain. Now you don't have to go into your big long egghead explanation of why that is, because I already know why that is, but it still doesn't make any sense. I mean, you know, if you just stop and think about it logically, it should be hotter up on the mountain, not colder. And if you would think about this logically, those holes should be the first thing that fills in, not the last thing. I rest my case. The jury is out. Well, I do think brushing the lacquer on did fill a few more holes, but quite honestly, it's still disappointing that it's got a lot of holes to fill yet. So I'm going to try a toothpick. I'm, you know, you got to try different things. I'm going to try a toothpick with some of the finish and I'm going to go right down these deep grains and just see what happens. I doubt it's going to make a bit of difference, but figure nothing ventured, nothing gained. So have you ever seen a leopard spotted 12 string? Well, now you have. You know, I don't know if that's going to work or not, but it was worth a shot, I guess, to try it. Won't hurt anything, I don't think, because worst case is I'll sand it off again and it ought to be just a tiny bit fuller. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. Well, the leopard spotted 12 string has been drying over the weekend. I wanted these spots to really have plenty of time to dry because what happens when you daub this kind of finish on and you try to sand it off before it fully cures, 
it rolls up and just peels off. I'm hoping that won't be the case here. I got, I think this is some 220. I'm just gonna hit a few of these spots and see how they take it. I have to say, it does look like they filled the holes finally by dobbing it on there that heavy. So, uh, if they sand off without creating too much trouble, I might be uh, close to finishing this thing up. You notice the hesitancy there in my voice. It's because no nothing about finish ever goes exactly like you want it to. And honestly, this is uh, working, but I'm kind of sanding through really fast. I didn't... Maybe the 220 is too, too much for the finish that's left on around it, I guess. I don't know. Because I am sanding through everything, it looks like. But, at least it's full. So, you know, as long as I don't open up any new grain while I'm doing this, I think we're good. Right now, everything looks perfectly smooth. And you notice I said right now because I don't want to jinx myself and say it's fixed. Because as sure as you get overconfident with this stuff, it will show you who's boss. My friends, it has been a tough fight, but this old 12 string is going to yield eventually. <laughs> I pretty much finished with it, I believe, and finished the finish, if that makes any sense. The, uh, it looks really nice. I'm really happy with it. Um, this oil varnish finish is a little tough to spray on. It's you boy, you can barely put any on at all. If you go over any spot twice, it will run. It's it's just a given. Um, so it, with that said, I don't see any runs in the finish except there's a tiny, tiny little bit of a run right about where my finger is, and you probably can't even see it. If I if I could get the glare to go across that, you can probably see it right there. I think you can. Um, it's it's very minimal very very minimal so I think we can sand that off buff it out I don't think it'll be a problem uh, but it's really looking good and this this kind of varnish really should enhance the sound of the guitar too so I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what this thing sounds like gonna go ahead and uh, try to knock down these little it's just like little fine bumps almost like sandpaper type feel to it. It looks really good, but it doesn't feel that good. It's not smooth. So I'm, I've got some really fine steel wool. I'm going to try that first and see if that will do it. And if it does, great. If not, I may have to go to a very fine sandpaper and just sand it very lightly and then buff it out. Either way, it's more elbow grease. Might as well start right where I've got the problem with the uh, with the run. This makes most things disappear, this, this uh, fine 
steel wool really does make things disappear on this kind of varnish. It's recommended by the manufacturer to use this on it. And I think the advantage is that it, it smooths it out without removing a lot of it. I think that's what it does. At least that's what it seems like it's doing. It's looking pretty good. You can see how it's really dulled it down there, which, you know, just means I gotta buff it back out. But at least it feels pretty smooth. I'll be honest though, it's not seem, it doesn't seem like it's doing what I was hoping it was gonna do. Now that I rub my hand back over it, I can still feel the bumps. And I don't think this is gonna get rid of those bumps. Well, yeah, it just, it's just not easy being me. That's all I can tell you. I'm pretty sure this would work if you did it. So why don't you come here and do this for me? Cause I'm pretty sure it'll work for anybody else but me. Um, I don't know. It's annoying, it really is. Cause I have worked my tail off on this finish and it looks beautiful except for that you can feel these little tiny bumps in it. I guess I'm gonna have to go to sandpaper cause this isn't gonna satisfy me. I really wish we had that 3M uh, Pro sandpaper in the uh, 600 grit or higher but it only comes in 400 grit that I can find. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I'm sure you can get different grits in that kind of sandpaper, but uh, not that specific uh, kind of sandpaper. I haven't found it in those finer grits. It's Anyway, I've got 600 here, but the problem with using this wet or dry 600 is that it loads up it, almost instantly. It's just annoying as it can be. And frustrating beyond words. And even if you wet it down, it still loads up. Um, I don't know. I may try experimenting with some wetting it down with some soap and stuff and see if that would work. Mostly right now, I just wanted to see if this is gonna knock down this area and get get rid of the bumps because the bumps are a killer deal right now we got to get rid of the bumps yeah that's doing it that's getting rid of the bumps at least because it's it's significantly rougher over here you can probably even hear it hear the roughness and then when I Rub it here, totally different sound. This is this is smooth, this is rough, and I think you can hear that, and you can feel it for sure. I'm not gonna bore you guys with that. I'm just gonna sand like crazy here with this uh, 600 for a while until I get everything at least that smooth, and then I'll show you what my next step is. My friends, here's the update on the 12 string. I have done some sanding on the back here, as you can see, and I've done a lot of test plots and different kinds of sanding on it to just see what was working, what wasn't working. I, I prefer to sand dry if I can, and uh, you know, sanding wet's okay, but it's just kind of a little bit more hassle, you know. So what I did was, in this case, I tried the steel wool, as you saw, I tried the 600 uh, dry, Neither one of those worked very well. I even tried adding a little bit of oil with the 600, with the 600, and that didn't work very well either. So I finally went back to the water and soap method with the 600, wet or dry, and that seems to be working pretty well. That's about the best I can do, I think. Um, this, you know, I wasn't really sure whether this particular varnish would would appreciate the water too much. I was afraid that the water might penetrate this kind of varnish a little bit. But it seems to be handling it just fine. So that's the method I'm going to stick with, I believe, for the rest of the guitar. I'm just, I've got quite a bit of dish soap in the water, just so you know. Normally I only put one or two drops in it, but this finish sticks to this sandpaper so much that I thought if I load it down with a little bit more soap, it'll probably stick less. 
And right now that's not sticking at all, so that's a really good thing. It's keeping the sandpaper clean. You can see there that after I rinse it off, the sandpaper is, is basically clean. It's not uh, building up. That's huge when you're doing a lot of sanding like this because the buildup will just drive you crazy. So I think we're gonna get it done now. Just a little bit more hassle with the water, but not that big a deal. Well, my friends, I did go over the whole thing with the 600 lightly, and now it's nice and smooth, uh, feels great everywhere. I'm gonna take some 1200 with some more fresh water and soap, and I'm gonna go over, over the whole thing again with the 1200 and hit it, you know, kind of light, but I wanna make sure I get good coverage. You know, I'm, I'm not gonna have any gaps in, in coverage. So I got a lot more of that to do, and I'll show you what it looks like just before we go to the buffer. Well, there you have it, friends and neighbors. I've got it sanded down to 1200. It turned out real nice. There is a little bit of a splotchy effect going on in the finish, but I've seen that every time I've used this finish. I think the only thing that kind of gets rid of the look of that is the steel wool, but I think before I steel wool it, I'm gonna try buffing it to see if the buffing will get rid of it. And um, if it does, great. If not, then we'll try the steel wool and then buffing. But right now it's looking really nice. I'm gonna stop at the 1200 level here and hope that I don't have to go further than that. But I'm gonna give it at least a couple hours to dry before I try, try buffing it because I figure that that water and soap soaks into the finish even just microscopically just a little bit and it that has to soften the surface just a little tiny bit so i'm going to give it plenty of time to dry make sure the finish is really hard before i try to buff it due to having the tape covering this fingerboard for so long there was quite a bit of tape residue on here i've cleaned all that off with uh, some lighter fluid and um, also uh, a little bit of scraping here and there. Uh, it left the fretboard looking kind of dry, kind of white, so I've shaken up my Be Good Oil and we're going to put that on here. That's going to wake this back up again, I believe, and make it look beautiful. I still have not buffed the instrument out. I'm waiting uh, on that to just give it a little more time to make sure the finish gets hardened back up after all that wet sanding. This really does make it look nice. I like what this stuff does to natural colored wood. Just looks really good. Wipe it back dry with the dry part of the rag. There's what she looks like all finished up. I think that looks pretty darn nice. We're over here at my uh, fat shaker buffing wheel and the reason I by the way, the reason I call it the Fat Shaker Buffing Wheel is the stand was on one of those fat shaking machines that you probably saw on I Love Lucy back in the 50s. <laughs> now, if you're less than 64 or 5 years old, you might not have seen that. <laughs> anyway, that's what they, they used to have these machines that just would have put a belt around you and just shook your fat, basically, is what it amounts to. And that's what the stand of this buffing wheel is on. I, I, found, I found the whole machine, the uh, motor part and everything, all together in the dump one day. 
And I thought, well, that stand will come in handy for something, so I salvaged the stand, and sure enough, it made the perfect buffing stand. So, I imagine that the person using this fat shaker never ever thought it would be used for this. <laughs> We're at the, at the station here, and uh, we've got two different kinds of rouge. One of them is, uh, it's the darker rouge, and this is for the kind of the roughing out. Um, well, I don't know. It, it really does a fine job on the buffing. I, I hardly ever go to the very fine rouge. I just use this most of the time, and it does a pretty darn good job. On this one, I'm going to try using some of the finer rouge as well. But so far, it's taking a long time just for this heavier rouge to work. I keep the dark rouge or the heavier rouge or coarse rouge, whatever you want to refer to it as, on this wheel. And I keep the fine stuff on the other wheel over here. So let's turn it on and I'll show you how I do it. Okay, and this is the treble side that has not been buffed yet. So you can see it before here. edge of this and you don't want that to happen because that jerks it down like that and it seriously could jerk it out of your hand but I can't try to explain I've been searching for the sunny spots an after look at it and it's not perfect but it's much improved I'm going to spend quite a bit more time buffing it trying to get that high luster I'm gonna go to the finer rouge in a little bit uh, to see if that improves it a little bit more but we'll see how it goes I'm gonna I'm gonna do the top now here's the top the before and you can see how dull it is it's pretty dull and then I'll show you the top in just a few minutes. I'm not going to film it, but I'll show you what it looks like after I'm done. So here's, after buffing it, you can see the shiny side, I think. You can see the light shining and how dull it is on this side comparatively. So it does work. It's just, honestly, it's not impressive. It's not, it's just not working the way I want it to. I wish it was doing a little better. It may just be that I've just got to do it a lot longer on this kind of finish. And uh, that may be the whole answer. So we'll keep you informed as we make progress. Well, this is one of those days when not very many things have cooperated the way they should. It's I should go check my horoscope. So therefore, I'm a little bit leery about uh, attacking this thing here to put the bridge on it, but I want to get the bridge on it tonight if I can, because I'd like to get it ready to play tomorrow before I leave to go to Mountain View. I'm taking the tip of the X-Acto and trying as close as I can to trace that tape. Just cutting the finish without trying to cut the finish without cutting the, the wood, really. tell I got it all cut all the way around there now let's just see if it'll cooperate and come up without any 
issues. That's pretty good. Got a little bit of tape right here, it's just a seam that didn't lift up, but it should come out, no problem. Okay. Now the worst I've probably got here is a little tape residue, if anything, but it looks pretty clean actually. A little bit of overspray perhaps in the seam right where the tape was butted up to each other. But I'll just, the wood feels good and dry and I don't really feel any tape residue, but I'm just gonna lightly scrape it all just to make sure there's nothing on the surface. Well, thank goodness it seems to fit the spot perfectly. It doesn't seem to move. I can move the whole guitar. I mean, it sits right down in the finish there. Um, yeah, I'll take that. Can't really beat that too much. Have to take the saddle out so I can clamp it down real well. I think I'm ready, so I'll get my stuff ready and we'll glue this baby on there. Okay, I'm going to start by applying the tight bond original glue that's probably enough this brush is lightly dampened in fact if anything I probably have too much as usual. I really take pains to make sure I get it into every nook and cranny. This, uh, you only get one chance on this and there is no point in rushing this part. There's going to be quite a bit of squeeze out from that. This is a nice surface. I think I will just wipe it down. My able-bodied assistants found the acetone for me here. Yeah. I will uh, just lightly wipe it down with this. I, I am not going to tooth it up. You can see there that it did wipe off some of the color. This uh, wood has like its own natural dyes in it. These uh, Paduk and Rosewood both have a lot of dye in them. To me, I'm just trying to expose the bare wood and get rid of some of the chemical or the dye that's in there. I think that'll make the wood, the glue stick better. This uh, acetone dries almost perfectly uh, and just almost instantly and does not leave any real residue. That's why I use it. So now I'll use the uh, brush to spread the extra on this, on this here, and I may have to go to the bottle and get a little more. Probably will have to. I like to use, just keep the glue perfectly smooth and as thin as I can get it, really. You know, more is not better necessarily in glue. 100% coverage is better. The thinner you can put it on and the better you can clamp it, really all the better. I believe I've got our full coverage there and it's enough that uh, the two surfaces will bond together really well. I'm going to take my time and make sure I get it lined up perfectly here. This is the tricky part. You want to make sure you get it right where you want it because it will try to move around on you. Now, I, I have the advantage of having this down in that finish, so it doesn't move nearly as much this way. And definitely I would not use salt on this application. 
The thing that people don't realize on the salt is that those salt granules are pretty hard and they actually keep a separation between the two parts. And I don't like that at all. I want the two parts to bond molecularly, if you will. They pretty much are in contact and that's the way I want it. I believe I've got it there. I'm wiggling it back and forth and I'm seeing squeeze out pretty much everywhere making it decide that it lives there right now before I put the clamps on it. I believe it's fairly convinced that that's where it needs to stay. I've got a call that I'm putting on the inside here and I've opened up the clamp Watching the leaves fall to the ground Just like my life, they're spinning around I think that's got it. Just for sanity check here. I'm going to put these wedges in behind and I'm going to tap them in just lightly. That will help hold the back down a little bit more than otherwise would happen. The touch of the wind The clouds rolling on I don't want to take no chances with a 12 string. I want to make sure that bridge is as snug as I can make it. As far as I can tell, that's about it right there. Now I'm going to take the wet paint brush and clean up the glue squeeze out along the edges here. Reminds me of when life was a song. Oh, this is about the best way you can get in there to clean it up. It's almost no other way to really get in there with all the clamps and the braces and stuff. So this is your best bet. And then I just try to go back in and dry it off. Well. Those are coming back out now for some reason, those wedges, so I'll take them out temporarily to clean this up. Alright, so now I'm going to get a clean, uh, lightly damp cloth and clean up all the glue residue around here. And I think we're about done. We're just going to have to wait till tomorrow to see what it looks like. It's the next day, in fact it's the next afternoon, so it's been almost 24 hours since we glued this on there. And I'm about ready to drill the holes. I've got a, um, I believe it's a 3 16 inch drill here that we're going to go through. This this is a little small, but it should get me going. It was a song, but it's Well, I got those holes all drilled back there for the bridge pins and I went ahead and reamed them off camera with a little pin reamer that, well, that I, I actually use the same reamer for my violin pegs. And now if I could uh, get my hands to work and open this up, I would put the tuning keys on it. There we go. So it's going to be a little process here because I got to I put them all back together. Well, looks like I'm going to have to do some cleaning out to get them in there. So I'll do that off camera. I'm not going to show that. I'm just going to get in there and clean out the gook. There must be junk in there. So I'll just do that with an exacto knife and get in there and scrape it out. Well, I got busy and forgot to turn it back on, but that's what it looks like. 
I'll tell you what, that looks nice to me. I'm pretty happy with that. That's what it looks like on the back of the peg head. It's a heavy peg head, as you might expect. <laughs> but uh, that's to be expected with a 12 string, I guess. We're about ready to start putting some strings on this baby. I've got the 12 string set out here that I already used to set it up with. I only used the first couple of st strings. The, the first two on this side and the top two on this side. So... I'm getting ready to put those back on. They should be plenty long and, and, and basically unused because I used, you can see here that they were wrapped up here at the end and this is going to go way past that so I'll just cut that bad part off and use it just like a brand new string. I'm not going to show all the string in process on this. Or if I do, I'll actually make this the uh, stringing video that I promised I would make. So maybe I'll do that, but make it a separate video. So one way or the other, we're going to get this thing strung up. Well, my friends, I kind of rushed through the setup and didn't film much of it at all on this 12 string. But that big moment is finally here. Oh my gosh. Is that a handsome guitar? Or is that a handsome guitar? Oh my gosh. I really couldn't be much more proud of this baby. And it plays like a dream. It's just a gorgeous guitar. And uh, I've got it tuned up. I've got it tuned one half step down. So one note low on every string. So here's what it sounds like. I'm just going to aim the camera down here a little bit and uh, just play a chord or two on it for you. Here's a G. I'm really happy with it. on the tuner it just really notes well the action is really good it's around 90 thousandths back here at the 12th fret uh, it's very low up here it's just you know it's below 18 thousandths at the first fret and the neck looks wonderful I was afraid it would have a big underbow but at the moment right now it's just about perfectly flat so it looks great Can't wait to hear them. Now, if I could just think of a song. Takes a little while to get your fingers used to playing one of these. So. I hope you've enjoyed the trip along with me on building this 12 string guitar. I am not going to really play it on this part of the video because I don't want to get demonetized. So I'll come up with a good song and I'll play it and sing it for you. And the hidden special treat I haven't told you about is that I'm going to have my daughter-in-law, Emery, play this and sing a Scottish folk song. And uh, I think you'll really enjoy that. I haven't heard it myself yet, but I know she's been practicing on a regular guitar. And she's never played a 12 string as far as I know, so this will be her first attempt at even playing a 12 string. By the way, I thought I mentioned too that this pick guard is only stuck on there with uh, masking tape. I just doubled the masking tape and stuck it on there temporarily. 
Anyway, uh, that's just on there temporarily because right now we can't get a hold of that fellow. And who knows whether we'll send this to Scotland or not. And we may have to end up making a new pick guard for this. We may auction this pick guard off. You just never know. So we'll see how it all goes or it may stay together. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this journey. It has been one heck of a journey for me. By the way, I see there's no label in there. I'll be sure there's a label in there whenever I do the song set, and you'll be able to see that, and I'll tell you all about it in that video. So, thanks again. Take care. Please subscribe. Tell your friends. Click that like button. Thank you.